All right, well, welcome to the Safe Life Defense Ballistic Lab. This is probably the most fun portion of our business that exists. It's actually my favorite place to be and where I would spend all my time if I could. We built this thing from scratch and we get full NIJ uh, lab results here. Actually, it's just a little bit more difficult. I actually like keeping it a little more difficult so when we send it off to confirm at the lab, we know we're going to be good. But we do every part of the process here using all lab grade equipment and in a very efficient and effective manner. So let me take a few minutes and I'm gonna walk you through all the stages or all the, the key equipment that we need to run this lab. So our ballistic lab is composed of an AR500 steel chamber with an AR500 steel down tube. We're using a universal receiver made by Bill Wiseman. It is a lab grade piece of ballistic equipment that allows us to fire really any type of round out of this. We change out our barrels. These are single shot mechanisms uh, operated by pneumatic lines. We'll get to showing you how that works, but this is kind of what allows us to get all this testing done. And we create a bit of a baffle system here. So as we shoot this, it goes down range. You're not getting gases in your face um, and it makes it much more quiet. After we load a round up through there and take a shot, the round will travel down the downrange tube. It comes down into our chamber down here. And inside of this chamber is where we measure all of our velocities. This is an extremely, extremely accurate system. We'll end up placing our clay block in here and our armor. We can get all that measured and I'll show you that in a bit. But as we get this door closed, this is a fully self-contained system so that it's safe to run all day without interrupting the rest to safe life defense. In here, you can see some of the varieties of different barrels that we use for armor development. This is a 5.56, we have some 9mm down here, 357 mag, 308, 30 odd six. Um, and then we end up having to stock all of our powder and uh, ammunition. To make sure that every shot is exactly on point, we are hand loading every single round that we use at the lab. So we're in the lab, there's many things that we're looking at, but the two biggest ones are penetrations. You obviously wanna make sure the armor stops the bullet, um, and then back face deformation or back face signature. That's measuring how much of the blunt force energy gets transferred into an individual when they would be shot in the armor. One of the most key parts of the ballistic lab is the clay blocks, because that's actually what we strap the armor against and what we're gonna shoot the armor against so that we can measure the amount of blunt force that gets transferred into an individual, while at the same time providing a medium that's very, very difficult to actually stop rounds on. We do a lot of testing to determine at what temperature these need to be kept to make sure that they are a consistent and NIJ qualified result. Now it's actually much easier to stop bullets when they're on a more firm, not a hard, but a more firm surface like an individual or maybe even a rubber backing than it is the clay. Now this clay is not meant to mimic human flesh or bone or anything like that. And as you can see, it is really soft. Uh, there's no possible way that I'd be able to just you know, do that to a human. But that's what we use to measure that energy that gets transferred in. It's a very consistent and uh, proven method. So this process is called our preconditioning drop. We're dropping a specified ball bearing from a very specific height um, that is a free fall. And what we're gonna be doing is leveling out this clay um, and then measuring the indentations that are left in, that are left in that clay box. Um, that's going to let us know whether or not our clay is conditioned to the level that's acceptable for an NIJ standard test. That indentation needs to be 19 millimeters, plus or minus two. As long as we're in that range, um, on average, with no, well, there's a little more to it, but as long as we're in that range on average, uh, we're good to go. 19.1, 19.1. 19.1. The NIJ specifies for 44 Magnum. We want to be three inches from the edge. So we're going to use calipers to make sure that those are measured out. We do have templates on NIJ certified sizes that are automatic, that just have an automatic placement. But when you talk about something in production that has a more unique shape, we have to measure each of those out by hand. With every test, we have our test log as well. Uh, so we created a database here that we take all the information down on all of those samples all the velocities, how many grains it took within that round, because um, we have to hand load all these, and all the information so that at any point we can go back and look at specifically what happened here. So I don't need to be physically present to know at any time how our lab is doing or how armor performs, because we have classifications and procedures in process where I could be on the other side of the world and we're all good to go. All armor that we ever shoot here 
also gets stored away into an armor library. So if 10 years down the road, we want to go look at something that we found on here that looks like it might have been promising, we can go pull it out of the library and we're all set. The two roles in the lab are very specific. The controller is responsible for overseeing the entirety of the test. Um, they're the ones that load up every single round, make sure that the velocities are on point, make sure that the armor is in compliance with our test standards, and is really kind of at the helm of the ballistic lab. Then we have our lab operator. We have Josh down there, who is the one who is responsible for maintaining the clay, making sure that the impacts are on point, making sure we're verifying um, all of the velocities, um, and really assisting in all of the operational aspects of the lab. The two of these people work really, really well together. And it's important that every procedure is exactly on point because we wanna make sure every single thing that we do is the same, whether it's now, two years down the road, or yesterday. So there's two types of testing that we mainly do in the ballistic lab. One is called V0 testing. V0 testing is probably what you're most familiar with. That's where we measure blunt force deform or back face signature um, to get our BFD ratings um, and to make sure that no armor goes or that no bullets go through the armor. The most common sense type of armor testing. But then we also have an alternate type of testing and that's called V50. V50 is designating at which point 50% of the rounds get through the armor. Now that's really important for learning what the limitations of our armor are, is, and to also make sure that we have absolutely no chance of a round going through at the specific velocity mentioned by the NIJ. Because we can have an armor that stops, you know, the 14, 30 feet per second round every time you think after you shoot it 100 times. But then when you do V50 testing, you can find out, hey, you know, at 1430, we seem to be okay every moment, but Sometimes when we get to 1,500 feet per second, we'll start getting rounds through. And that's just cutting it way, way, way too close. So we wanna make sure that we always stop the round and we have good back face deformation ratings as required so that someone is safe. But we also wanna make sure that we go above and beyond to make sure that there is absolutely no chance, even if someone you know, might load around a little bit hot, that there is no chance that, our, that that round is gonna get through our armor. So that's where V50 comes in and that's a whole other process. The one we're doing right now, is V0. To make sure every round it, that we fire is on point, we use a very and this precise hand loading method. We do a lot of warm up testing to figure out how many grains of, uh, of powder we need to get to that 1430. So we put in how many grains we want and hit go. And this is automatically going to dispense exactly that 11.3 grains. We used to do this by hand. And that works very well, but we can have a little bit of fluctuation. Even though it's well within range, I really like things to be as precise as possible. So once we start using a more digital automated method, right now it's at 11.28, and it's gonna get now 11.3. Now, instead of having a spread of maybe 10 to 12 feet per second between shots, we're right on point. We are going to load it into our casing. We're going to take our 44 mag, semi-jacketed hollow point round. We're gonna get that hand loaded. And now we're good to go. We had that clay box at a 90 degree angle, so that was, cut, that was shooting right into it. We have it strapped up by five straps. The NIJ specifies three horizontal, two vertical, two inch elastic straps. So that's exactly what we use. And we are going to see what happened here. Alpha. There's two designations we use when we first shoot an armor panel. Alpha, stop the round. Bravo, we did not. And you would think that when you're in the lab, you never want to hear the word bravo, but it's actually very common that we want to figure out where the limitations are. So there's, it's very often that we're shooting to try and get through these things. It's just as important to learn where the limits are as to whether or not you're stopping that, that round. Just to save some time, but we're going to do two more shots before we get our back face deformation ratings. But you kind of see the crater that's in here. Well, now you can't, but we'll get it in a minute. The lab operator does have a camera so that you can constantly monitor exactly what's going on in the lab. You want to make sure that the, that the chronograph and everything is lined up, that the armor, the armor sample is on point, and of course, that nobody's in there. 
you can see, he's going he's to look for that, that point of impact there. He's going to jack it up, make sure that's right. He's going to make sure that the box is aligned, double check everything. Once he's clear there, door is closed. Clear. And now he's ready to fire. Loaded. Here. Typically, when you see a panel jump like that on the box, it means that you stopped the round. So that energy is getting halted in that armor and it does a little bit of movement. If you're shooting armor and it goes through it, usually you're not gonna see any bit of jump there. I'll take that please. So, um, after we do our first three shots, thank you, and here is the back of it. We're gonna shoot the rest too. Uh, after we do our first three shots, come on down this way. We're now gonna get our readings on the back face deformation. These are those BFDs that everybody um, knows about in some way. So what we're gonna be doing is taking a steel angle, actually aluminum angle. We're going to level this off so that it's nice and flat. And we're gonna use a caliper to measure the indentation that's left in there. Now, again, you may see these craters. It's important to remember, I cannot do that to you. This is not meant to be, like, this is not meant to be a medium that mimics your flesh and bone. It is just a consistent medium measured, uh, a consistent medium that's proven to be a good indicator of blunt force. 34.05. So, uh, NIJ limit is 44 millimeters. Uh, I like to keep it under 38. 3A plus always overachieves. 34. 30.4. 30.4. 30.4. Just ridiculous. Just really, honestly, 3A plus is over the top armor. In my opinion, the most protective soft armor you can get. It's unbelievable. 30.6. This is fantastic. We got our BFDs, but we're gonna keep continuing with the NIJ uh, six shot standard so that we can make sure all the rounds are stopped. Yes? One, four, three, two. One four two eight. One four one four. One four one four. Oh, low. Still in range. Wonder why it was so low. We just completed an NIJ test. Granted, it wasn't with the obliquity shots. They're just easier to stop. So, making sure all of our shots are within 14, 30 feet per second, plus or minus 30. Everything is green. We have one here that uh, the Chrono didn't pick up. That happens every now and then. Limits for BFD, 44 millimeters. We are sitting at an average on this of 31.68. So like phenomenal. If you compare that to a lot of other armor out there, you're not seeing 30, 31s. You're just not. After we test our armor panels, we always do a post test inspection. And in that inspection, one of the things that we're looking for is the round look. And now that's what the, the bullet looks like as we pull it outside of the panel. And the way that, that those bullets look can tell us a story as to what's happening when that armor is getting shot. Because even with a high speed camera, you can't really tell what's going on because it's just kind of getting absorbed into the panel. So here's a couple of the things that we look for or a couple of the classifications that we came up with to help us understand how our armor is working. So one of the things that we look for most, we call pancake rounds. These are rounds that get opened up very quickly and are easier to stop because they've just been spread out and their, their weight has been flattened so much. Uh, we call it a pancake well, for obvious reasons. Another classification that we came up with is a cone. Um, it is a round that maintains a bit of its mass at the front but has a much thinner edge around it. It has a cone shape. In this case, when we see a cone, it typically makes it a little bit farther into the panel and also has a slightly higher BFD. That's because this, this round isn't stopped as quickly and still has a bit of its mass. Much like the pancake and the cone, you can have combinations of classifications as well. In this case, we have 
a pan cone. This is a very thin and spread out cone that kind of looks like a pancake, but it has a bit of a, sh a shape to it uh, that isn't quite flattened out. These are pretty good to see as well. And a lot of the times you can see this in, uh, these will be stopped within the first layer or two. They just end up maintaining some more of their shape. The way we classify everything and have it in here, this would be a green, this is all good to go. A couple of other examples that we'll find for you probably in this shot is fragments. It's when you shoot, when we shoot the panel and there's just a bunch of little fragments, little chunks in there. Typically those are stopped very, very quickly. When dealing with fragments, it's very important to also make sure that you're breaking up the entirety of that round. Because if you have a shard that has a lot of the mass still inside that fragment, it is easy for that to travel through the panel. We want to absolutely obliterate that round. In some cases, we have a bowl here as well. Bowl is similar to a pancake, yet has a lot of mass and, I mean, enough of a bowl that you could eat a it's little cereal out of it. Bowls are okay, not ideal. We're really looking for pancakes and frag pancakes. That's the ideal all the time. Now that we have our test done, we're gonna cut this armor panel open and see what happened here. Things that we notate are round looks, anything that's weird, and how many layers actually got penetrated in this armor. So there is a shot pattern that's typical, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're just gonna start, so that's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we got shot six, eight layers penetrated. Eight layers. So this is a prime example of a pancake. Pancake being a very flattened out, wide and thin round. It's perfect. We'll just put him back right there. And 10. Uh, shot one, 10 layers penetrated. This is a uh, semi-frag pancake. So, this isn't enough for me to call it a fragmented pancake because it still has some intact wings, but unlike the first one that we saw, you know what, it is broken up a bit. So that's a semi-fragmented pancake. Shot three, 11, and that is also a semi-fragmented pancake. Uh, we have shots two, 12 layers penetrated. That one's a bit more, I'd call that a frag pancake. And what's cool too, if we really want to, you have that other scale by the way? Yeah. We can measure, in certain cases, we'll also measure out um, how much of the round is left. So all these start off at 240 grains, 240 grains. And what we have left of it is 146. So most of its mass has been fragmented off uh, and the casing has, I mean, also been mostly obliterated. We also have shots five, uh, same layers penetrated, pancake. And for the final one, we have four, uh, four, 15 layers and that's also a pancake. So there's what we got. Again, this is exactly what we want to see. We want to see pancakes. We want to see fragmented pancakes and or fragments. This is absolutely beautiful. With the 3A plus being BFDs within the third, like very low 30s, almost into the 20s. Round looks that are fantastic. Uh, layers penetrated, not making it halfway through. The 3A plus has just been the tried and true safest, most protective armor that's out there for the last five years and nothing about that has changed. It's absolutely phenomenal. So I hope this kind of helps you understand what BFDs are, what we go through to make sure this armor works. Awesome test. Uh, this is fantastic. That's perfect. We'll put all this away. It goes on to its tray in order. And once the lab gets to it, we'll put those all into our armor library to file away. Should we ever need to look at them later on as well. So that's the majority of what we do here at the lab.